Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is the Lord God. I greet you all with the peace of the Lord, all of our brothers and sisters. We are in the home of he who is sweet, of the Lord Jesus. Amen. He has sweetened up our lives. There's so many things that are bitter around the world, in our lives, that we are subject to. But we thank God because we are here singing. We are here glorifying God. And it's a blessing truly to be here in his presence. My beloved, we are here tonight. This morning we had a message that was transmitted to us and I wanted to share with everyone. We're going to open up in our Bibles to Romans. <coughs> the book of Romans chapter 13. We're going to read three verses in this chapter. The verse 12, 13, and 14. So it will be Romans 13, 12, 13, and 14. Um, the word of God is already projected. And so let's go ahead and read. The word of the Lord says, The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry or drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Let's pray to God. We ask God for your blessing as we read your word now, as we dive into this message, God, so that you can give us the revelation. Lord, speak to us so that this could edify our hearts and our lives and strengthen our spiritual lives. We ask, Lord, for your peace and that every hear, ear who, who is listening and heart can receive this word. In Jesus' name, amen. My beloved, ever since January, the beginning of this year, we have put so much emphasis on of our theme of the year, which is those who have ears listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. This is the theme of our year. And we are living in a time <coughs> that is very special this year. And we need to adjust our ears so that we can hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. It's not what I'm saying, it's not what someone else is saying, but it's what is coming from eternity. It's what the Holy Spirit is saying to us that comes from eternity. Why? Because He is the one that Jesus has allowed to take care of us. He has left the Holy Spirit here on earth with us to take care of us. When Jesus went back to heaven after He resurrected, He left with us the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the comforter so that he could take care of us in all things so tonight we are here at pompano beach and the holy spirit is here as well he's speaking to every heart every ear that is listening because the lord god knows you my brother my sister he knows what you need in this moment i don't know i'm a pastor but i don't know pastor sabadu doesn't know but the holy spirit knows and i have certainty that this work is going to speak to your heart tonight god has showed us in a vision that there's going to there is a woman here a lady and it's she's not a visitor she is she frequents the church she is a member and the lord is saying that she has come here tonight saying i will not accept any prophecy over my life she is not going to accept any prophetic word given to her but God has said that as we are transmitting this gift, this vision, God is going to actually transform her heart so that she can not only receive a prophecy, but believe that it is the word of God. God is speaking. He's operating. 
the problem is not in God, who is operating, it's in us. Our vision can be blocked, our spirit can be unreceptive, there could be difficulties and battles, but the Holy Spirit is the one that is working, and the fault is not in Him. And so tonight, God has revealed this information from the Holy Spirit so the church can receive this information. It's not for specifically Maranatha, specifically for any other denomination of church, but for the faithful church of God. And I sometimes ask, where is this church? What is this faithful church? It's the, the church that hears God, and it's the church that is attentive to the signs. And so tonight, God is sending us some um, instructions for us to follow, in which we will transmit here. And you will absorb everything we are saying tonight. And so tonight, the verse that we read in Romans, um, this chapter was made for the Romans in Rome. And um, in this chap, in this book, there are some instructions for the faithful church how God wants us to be. So the first orientation He's giving us is that the night has passed. We are not speaking of night and day as we humans know it. We are speaking of night and day spiritually. Nighttime in the spiritual sense talks about the sin, the darkness of the world. And the darkness of the world, it often blinds the spiritual. But the day that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as the God of our lives, as our Savior, as from that moment on, the nighttime is past. Now it's light. Why? Because Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. He is the light of our lives. And so the people who walked in darkness, they will no longer walk in darkness. So the first instruction God is giving to us tonight is that the night is past. And what the Holy Spirit is telling us is, my brother, my sister, the nighttime has passed for you as well. Do you think that maybe it hasn't passed yet? When do we know that the night time is done? It's when the light comes, right? So it's when Jesus enters into our lives. And God is telling us that the light is now here. Jesus is here. And so the question I tell you tonight is, is Jesus in my heart? I'm asking myself, is Jesus in my heart? Is he present in what I say, what I do, the way I act? Does the world see Jesus in me? Has the world seen the person of Jesus Christ in me, through me, in what I do, in what I say, in what I realize in my life? Is Jesus operating through me? So if there is, if Jesus is shining through me, then the night is past and the light is here. Jesus is here. And so when the nighttime passes and the light comes, we need to receive now what the Holy Spirit wants to tell us, what He is instructing us of. And so the instruction that God is giving the Church of Pompano Beach today, if you want to take notes, this is very important. It's important that we follow these instructions so that we have the certainty that if Jesus comes today, He can find us doing what He has revealed to us. And so the Lord God, He has told us to say to everyone here, First, that we have to reject the works of darkness. If the night is past, that means there's no more darkness. With Jesus, we have light. And so, the works of darkness is what destroys man, who, what brings you sadness, what brings you disappointment, what hurts you, maybe in your home, in your family. All of this are the works of darkness. And so today, God is telling us to reject those works of darkness. It's the first step. And second, He's telling us to put on the armor of light. Everything that is coming from Jesus, everything that comes from God, we have to put on. What is it? God is, Jesus is love. Jesus is forgiveness. Jesus is light. 
So we have to put all these things on. Jesus is everything that our heart needs. Peace, joy. We have to seek peace. We have to seek joy. We can. We have to reject anything that is of sadness, anything that is of bitterness in our hearts, and only accept what is good. We are in the work of light. Next, we have to walk properly, honestly. We have to walk in honesty. Why? So that the world, you can, they can see Jesus in us. They can see Christ in us. God, He is the doctor. He is faithful. Jesus is the truth. He is the life. He was trustworthy. If you are understanding all of this, then you have to also walk in all of these things. As a body of Christ, as the church of Jesus Christ, we have to walk in this way so that we may be prepared when He comes to take us to heaven. Next, God is telling us, to do not walk in revelry, drunkenness, lewdness, lust, strife, or envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Those who are in Christ do not have flesh, do not leave space for the flesh to operate because the flesh is dominated by the Spirit. When we hear from the Holy Spirit, we are hearing Him speak And so we don't give space to the flesh when we are letting the spirit operate. We are not giving space to any of our fleshly desires. We are only letting the Holy Spirit work and revel in his blessing. And tonight, the God, has, God has sent us this message tonight. And he's telling us, everyone who has ears and is hearing this, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Understand this. Understand this revelation. It doesn't come from the pastor this and that, from the ministry of this and that. No, it's coming from God. It's His direction. It's what He has for us. And in this moment, we are needing to walk looking upwards, looking to Jesus, who's the author of our faith. Let's remember, the night is past. The day is coming. The day is here. We are rejecting the works of darkness. We are in the works of light because the Lord Jesus, He is coming. At any moment, at any moment, He can come. We're not going to need any instruments, any pastors, any deacons, any servants, any praise group. No, we won't need any of that because we will be in heaven with our God. And in heaven, everyone will sing glory, glory, glory to God.
Glory to God. This word tonight, God has sent this message because while we were praying for the church, there was this revelation of the lady that we mentioned. But God has said that the situation of this lady that doesn't want to accept the prophecy, it's someone that comes to this church. It's someone that's here. God said that when the revelation was going to be brought to her now, after today, she was going to accept it. It's as simple as that. But she was letting the oppression of her heart block the revelation from God. We cannot allow this. And so God gave her this revelation because he said that he wants to leave his blessing to a lot of people here tonight, a lot of servants. And God has given a direction. He said for us to lay hands on the church tonight because the Holy Spirit is here tonight. He is operating. Let's all be standing. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to invite the whole uh, the pastors to be up here so that we can pray with the laying on of hands. You can close your eyes now and just receive the blessing. God wants to give light. He wants to reject the darkness. The battles come, the struggles come, but the Holy Spirit wants to guide your life. And my beloved, we're going to pray now. And it's in moments like these where the enemy, he's raging. He doesn't want you to have faith, to have hope that Jesus is coming. But Jesus is coming at any moment. And at any moment, the church will be raptured. So if you are going through anything, if you want this moment, um, if you would like, kneel down on the floor. Um... If you kneel down, we will pray for you. And it's a demonstration that you need a blessing, whether that be for your school, for your health, for your education, your career. Anyone who desires, anyone who desires may kneel down in this moment and receive the blessing from the Lord. I'm going to lay on hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. My church, my eyes are contemplating each one of you. I know exactly what is in your heart, the necessities, the afflictions, the oppression, the worry, the sadness, the pain, the, the infirmity. But in this moment, while these hands are extended upon you, I leave upon you the blessing of my spirit and to you my sir, my son that you have kneeled down and your heart is afflicted but right now I console you I comfort you so that you can receive my message to you so that you can walk in the light because it is in the light that I want my servants to be because I want to take a church that walks in the light and to you my daughter you are going through a moment of trials in your faith you're going through anxiety and the Holy Spirit is hugging you right now. I send an angel to hug you, to wipe your tears and to make you happy in God's presence. I am your God. Church, give attention to what my Holy Spirit is saying because at any moment, my son is going to come to rapture the church to live with me forever in heaven. Bless, it, bless the name of the Lord of your God because my blessing is coming. As a result of my grace, that is an undeserved favor. Lord God, operate a blessing in this moment to the servants in this church. Leave your love to be manifested amongst us at each moment. And that we can trust in the Holy Spirit. Please pour out your blessing. We are thankful. We are glor glorify your name for this glorious moment that we have spent in your presence. And the grace, the marvelous grace of God, of Jesus Christ, your son, the, uh, the love, the grace of the Holy Spirit. 
the operations of the Holy Spirit, the consolations can bless your people now and forever. Amen. Amen. Everyone can sit now and the peace of the Lord Jesus to all. Brothers, we are here. We are at your disposal for anyone who so desires a, a prayer. God has already given a blessing who has touched many people. But even so, if you desire any assistance, if you would like a prayer, we can be praying for you tonight. Um, tomorrow at 1030, we will be back for our Sunday Bible school. And we leave you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Pastor Ilias will be with us one uh will be, be going back to Brazil tomorrow so let's be praying for him that he can have a safe trip back to his home and that God can be blessing peace of the Lord to all